I was I'm a native of Albany, Kentucky. Uh, oh, okay. That uh, which uh, uh, that uh, uh, was a farm community, uh, and and uh, my dad and, and uh, uh, mom uh, they got divorced back then. Back then. And I was, uh, I came to my, anyway, he had a farm in the valley, uh, down in the valley, and it was one of the bigger farms around in Albany, Kentucky. And uh, so uh, they got divorced, and he, uh, uh, he actually got divorced, I was very young, and uh, I was uh, uh, at, uh, well, uh, I was six years old. And, uh, and I never, it just seemed like it was yesterday, yesterday and uh, that uh, when we moved to the had an auction, sold everything, and out there on the farm, all the farm equipment and all of her, my older brother's uh, traps, where they trapped uh, yeah. for mink and yeah. stuff like that. And uh, so we moved to Illinois, uh, what, just small amount, what, uh, uh, like a cook stove and whatever, so yeah. set up a house, the minimum, sold everything else. Yeah. And, uh, and we, uh, it, was, it was a large, uh, uh, truck with a tarpaulin on it, and we were in the back. And uh, my dad, uh, he uh, uh, that uh, had a large sandstone, and uh-huh. and he put that in a fireplace down there, that uh, and then put a blanket over there, and that's where we kept warm coming. Yeah. That was uh, uh, in 1939, uh, in April 1939, and uh, we uh, uh, moved to uh, Taylorville, oh, Illinois, yeah. Yeah. Taylorville. And, uh, and of course, uh, as I said, my dad was a farmer and he continued to farm. The first he rented, uh, they hired on as a rental, like monthly, uh, yeah. uh, they used to uh, yeah. uh, practice. Uh-huh. And then later on, he bought, uh, he bought a farm. He bought, well, he bought, uh, but I have a farm, but uh, it wasn't yeah. all together. And, and uh, he had, uh, uh, well, uh, a little less than 200 acres oh, altogether. Okay. It was a good sized farm. Yeah. And uh, and and uh, and uh, dirt cattle, and uh, that's uh, that's where I come in. You know, okay. uh, even even a small shaver. And I, I told this when I was at the hospital. I was telling you earlier that uh, that uh, that uh, they had a uh, historical uh, thing up here in 19 and uh, on the plaza at the oh, okay. uh, courthouse uh, yeah. and uh, yeah, they call it gas, glass, oh, yeah. and, and something else yeah. that you can remember. Yeah. And, uh, but anyway, uh, that I have told him about the on a dairy farm and, and and before I uh, got up and <coughs> could go to school, yeah. I had uh, I had uh, three cows of milk. <laughs> and uh, my other brother, they milked the uh, you know, total, well, it's varied on the number yeah. of cows. But anyway, that I, uh, uh, some of them had heard me talk about I, uh, I, I would milk cows and, and, and they were, uh, had a machine up there out of the street. <laughs> and uh, so that, uh, that uh, I said, that's what that's my strength in the right arm. <laughs> that's where I did the uh, milking, you know, and that's what built uh, my arm up. And, uh, and I kept on razzing about that. Yeah. that, that they had, the guy brought uh, six goats in up there. I mean, they were uh, on the plaza, yeah. and uh, he had buckets and he had scales and they all all set up. And they they razzed me so much. That's when I was chief of police. You know. <laughs> you're right. And uh, oh, no, yeah, you you're building us, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, you milk cows and you grew up on the farm. And so I I, uh, I just took so much of it, and I said, okay, so sign me up. Yeah. You know, what the, what I do here, you know. And I looked over this one the goat and one and the bag of that goat that was really uh, uh, large. Yeah. yeah, I mean ready to be milked. Yeah. And and I sat down there and I and of course the, the poor old goat uh, flinched uh, several times. I mean I knew how to uh, yeah. milk. And uh, you know you can uh, uh, herd them a little bit if you milk too fast and hard. <laughs> and uh, so make a long story short, uh, and, and then there was two or three teenagers too, yeah. and, and and then they weighed the milk and all this and that, and then I trunk over there, and I got, I got a trophy. I'm the champion goat milker of Delaware <laughs> County. That, uh, that's an that, honor. That, that, that's so that's, that's yeah. much of that. Yeah. But anyway, that's uh, 1939, we moved to uh, Illinois, and, uh, and grew up on a farm there, and, uh, and my, I don't know, uh, my two older brothers, uh, I got 
uh, I had two older brothers and a sister between me and the next oldest brother yeah. and I. And then I got a younger brother. And so uh, that, uh, uh, that they, they, uh, they, they got up, uh, they, they joined the, the, the three C's, CC okay. camp. That was a big thing on me back yeah. then. And, you know, and, and, and after they got out of that, they uh, signed up for a year or two years or whatever it was. And they ended up at Muncie, but I had some relatives living here, oh, okay. uncles and aunts, and okay. no, not too many, uh, but, uh, and they came here, uh, Ball Brothers, oh, okay. you know. They, they were working work. for Ball Brothers? Oh, okay. uh, no, I didn't work. No, they, they were working they, for Ball Brothers. Yeah, and Owens, Illinois. Okay. And oh, okay. when they went down, uh, well, the next to Moses brother, he's an electrician at uh, Kimball Glass or Owens, Illinois. Right. And, uh, so they came here, and then my oldest brother, he, he was a German plumber. Oh, okay. I get people that I'm, uh, I have all my brothers, and they got skilled trades, yeah. and I don't have any, uh, you know, okay. but mine yeah. in a different area. Yeah. But, uh, and uh, so uh, we lived in Illinois, and, and, and they were here, and, and when I was in, in, well, in the eighth grade in high school, started high school over there. Yeah. And, uh, in the summer months, I would come over here, and, oh, okay. and then I had one of my one of my oldest brother. He had a good year, and that's where they were making tank tracks uh, back yeah. then. And yeah. then later on, they converted over to shoe soles. And uh, but uh, he was a supervisor out there, and he got me on uh, these summer. What did they convert over to? Uh, the shoe soles. Shoe soles. The shoe soles. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Uh, the, in fact, they were neoprene, oh, okay. and they and and. And, and later, from the tank tracks that, uh, you know, the, right. the, yeah. the, the bar, tanks, yeah. The, yeah. And, uh, but I, I uh, worked uh, at those. I mean, it's just like a, like, sort of like a bakery or uh, yeah. even a pizza place, you know, they were, uh, uh, they, they were mold yeah. there at the bottom and the mold on top and then you raise it up and, and so many minutes, uh, it was, you know, set the time. And, uh, and of course, you got to them up, and, and if you leave them there too long, you get yeah. bubbles in them. But anyway. Well, they, these things went from tank track to shoe soles? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, from tank track to shoe soles. That, that, that was, that, uh, oh, wow. that was uh, near the end of the uh, war. Yeah. And then, of course, I went to the military. Yeah. Uh, I joined the military when I was 17 years old. Yeah. And, uh, and so uh, that, uh, that I, uh, uh, I don't know, I, I look back, I, I think, oh, what a crazy thing I did, you know. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be here today, you know. And, of course, uh, I took my training, uh, the field artillery, in uh, Fort Knox, Kentucky, and, and, ta and somewhat tank training, but I was field artillery. I was, uh, that's what uh, my uh, basic training was, and uh, that was only six weeks, uh, very short. And uh, so, uh, and then, uh, they uh, shipped us out. Uh, uh, well, uh, <coughs> uh, well, of course, we first went to Atterbury, you know, yeah. first. They get to right. the clothing and all uh, this kind of thing, and uh, and they uh, uh, the word was they put out that we were going to Alaska. I mean, I, I, it was the war. I mean, we still uh, they knew the end of the war, right? That yeah. the end of the war, when I went in, and uh, and so it ended up we we did, they changed the order. We didn't go to Alaska. We went to the South Pacific, oh. and uh, and and on the islands uh, that uh, uh, well, the big ship was on. Uh, I, I forget, there were about three thousand people, I think, yeah. uh, two thousand something yeah. on this big ship, and uh, and it was uh, all artillery trained yeah. people, and and uh, and we was on the wake in Guam and, and uh, some them, and then. And uh, which now I didn't. I'm not going to tell you a big war story. Mm -hmm. I didn't see a lot of action. I didn't see any action other than flamethrowers. Uh, after uh, that, our division, I was uh, 61st Field Artillery Society in the First Cavalry Division, okay. and uh, that was the first division that landed in Japan in oh, okay. the, the end of the war. Huh. And that um, somehow uh, they going in the Japan, uh, Yokohama, that. Uh, it's uh, like that, uh, a bit of large ships, uh, you know, they would uh, uh, 
in the bottom of the clothes, I suppose, they they, they sure. get down so yeah. a lot of feet. And uh, but uh, uh, the war <coughs> was came to an end, and we was the first division that uh, landed in Japan. And uh, of course, after we landed in Japan, uh, there wasn't there wasn't hardly any trouble yeah. at all, other than and uh, after we got situated, uh, that uh, that. They, were, they end up on the mountains when we were on maneuvers. Uh, uh, MacArthur, he uh, oh, yeah. seemed like a, every week he had a parade. I mean, he, he, he loved those parades, you know. But uh, my MacArthur, you know, in the Philippines, I yeah. mean, he, yeah. my gosh, he lives there all his life. Yeah. I mean, since he is a military. Sure. Uh, I don't know, it's 25 or 30 years. Yeah. But anyway, that, uh, that, uh, that a lot of them didn't know the war was over. A lot of them didn't want to give up, and uh, the, the flamethrower, that was a big thing back then, other than uh, even more than hand grenades uh, like uh, yeah. other places. And, uh, and so uh, I uh, only spent, uh, I spent two years, and then the, the, we could work called occupational forces. Yeah. And uh, but, uh, my discharge on World War II uh, better because uh, right. it hadn't been signed until uh, the uh, see, December. 46. Oh, the end of the war? Yeah. Yeah, 45. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, well, 45, but it really wasn't officially. Yeah, until 46. Yeah, yeah, right. And so I was in that, uh, that last period, oh, right, okay. the end of the yeah. war. Didn't see any uh, great combat. Huh. And um, that's the thing my uh, other brother, the old, next to the oldest, he was a, a coast artillery. I mean, oh. it's funny we both ended up in <laughs> artillery. <laughs> it, it's on tests, uh, really, really. How a lot of uh, they give you a different type of testing, and this and that is at a low score. Not that there's a lot of brilliant men, I'm sure, in the infantry, but the the ones that didn't yeah. do too, they went to the infantry. Oh, you know, okay. the old. Uh, <laughs> but we, uh, uh, it, it'll say, and I get back from the uh, uh, the uh, discharge from the army. I can have two discharges. I, uh, I was just lucky. I was in the right place at the right time. Yeah. That uh, that uh, the, 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 you're gonna laugh about it. When I went over on the ship, I you know they asked for volunteers, and then of course they, no volunteers. Uh, they they volunteered. I ended up uh, as as a uh, working in uh, not, not KP, uh, a kitchen police. Uh, I ended up in the kitchen and uh, cook. Uh, you know the other. Uh, and I, of course, uh, it'll say back earlier that uh, I, before uh, Dad, uh, after Dad and Mom got divorced, you know, and, and, and I knew how to cook a little bit, not very much or at all. But if you go to cook school, and we got over there, and, and where we uh, got uh, located, and, and the six first field artillery battalion, which I was in, and it was a, it was a airplane. Factory oh. where they make the yeah. air, airplanes and snap, and real nice in one big building, and, on, and then the other buildings where they, the factory was where they made the, the fire, fire, fire yeah. planes, and uh, nice quarters. Huh. And uh, but I, uh, I they all lined us up all out there. I got pictures of the trunk over there, you know, and said, "How many? How many here uh, have, uh, have been a cook or or, uh, or been uh, flip hamburgers or yeah. whatever?" And uh, and of course, I I didn't hold my hand up, you know, and then then uh, my buddies, I I, I made uh, some buddies, you know, half a dozen, and they said, Campbell, Campbell, he's uh, he's uh, he, he's a cook, he they cooked all the way over on the ship, coming over, and uh, and that's where I got to be that's a cook. Got to be cook. Yeah, I went to cook, and uh, and I, uh, but just about everything I went at, I worked at. I mean, I didn't slough off. Uh, uh, I do it. I'm not a lazy person. I never have been. And uh, uh, even back in the farm, bucking bales, this and that. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's just part of the day. Yeah, but uh, anyway, uh, that uh, uh, that I uh, there was an old timer who was a mess sergeant, and I went in as a, uh, just a cook, and I then I made a second cook, and then first cook. Uh, uh, there was a whole time of uh, getting ready to get discharged, but he he was born and raised in England. And I never did figure it out. I talked to him a few yeah. times, you know, and uh, he was uh, he was a mess sergeant. <laughs> and uh, we had around two thousand uh, 
1800 to 2000 uh, went through, we had a battalion, yeah. Yeah. battalion mess hall, right. and uh, and get up, uh, you know, two thirty, three o'clock in the morning, starting breakfast, you know, and so uh, that uh, I made first cook, and then say when the old uh, guy, when he uh, was ready to got his orders to be discharged and ship back, and he he went he went back to England, he didn't stay, I don't know why, he went, he didn't stay here, but he was here and and he enlisted from here, okay. and. Uh, most of the guys that I was with, uh, uh, I think they were they were in, uh, they were enlisted people, and the others were drafted. So okay, I was going to say you you weren't drafted. No, uh, no, at seventeen. Yeah. In fact, uh, to be honest with you, that uh, that uh, at seventeen, that uh, uh, that I uh, in basic training, you know, I and it was hundred degrees in the shade, in Fort Knox, yeah. you know, and yeah. full field pack, and you know, uh, yeah. you, you and. And they were and uh, three, uh, three and a half miles that we had to walk, and sun bearing down, and a lot of them. I mean, you know, the paint had fell out. I mean, uh, we were all together. There was about a dozen uh, uh, the whole trip. And, uh, so, so when you got your discharge, then you came back here. Hey, yeah, when I got my discharge, I, I well, I stopped uh, over in Illinois first. Right. I mean, just to say hi, pop, yeah. uh, dad, and, yeah. and then I, I, I came back to here. Because, but I enlisted from here, too, okay, okay. and uh, not from Illinois. Okay. And uh, so that that uh, I uh, <clears throat> that uh, when I was 17, and 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 then uh, as a training in Fort Knox, uh, I, I thought about calling dad, to try to you know, yeah. uh, hey, this is <laughs> not yeah. for me. You know, and uh, being uh, underage uh, to uh, get me out. You know, and uh, and now and yeah, now I got right. to, I didn't yeah. want to do that. And I, I tucked it out. But after I got on the ship, and, and yeah. even uh, the yeah. occupation forces uh, in, in Japan, that I, um, uh, I I I liked it. I mean, I, I really liked it. I made a lot of friends. They and uh, and. You think you're going to write to all of them, you know, you, you get real right. close. I mean, yeah. uh, you go out uh, uh, on a town and you do all <laughs> things, and uh, over there, I mean, you know, uh, after, uh, I mean, we, we were the, the top dogs of the war, but so we won. That's right. So what did you do when you came back here? When I, when I came back here, that, uh, I, on November 18th, 1947, okay. uh, that I, Went to work at Warner here. Well, okay. I went to work at Illinois first, and right. that was just temporary. But uh, uh, November 1847, uh, that uh, I went to work at Warner here. Okay. And uh, I uh, just a uh, machine operator uh, at the uh, Ord Plant One okay. uh, in town here, you know. So, when, so for purposes of this study, so when you came back, and you started working at Warner Gear. That's when you joined the union. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Uh, that I, I was. Uh, I joined the union um, uh, immediately because. Okay. Uh, well, uh, my, I had an uncle here, and say that uh, he was a uh, active in the union, and, and he he talked somewhat about the union, okay. and, you know, and and where they did uh, some of the guys, and you know, and the working conditions, and one thing or another. And then I I thought, say, you know, and then of course. Uh, I, I thought about it. Hey, well, that's, that's uh, the union's good. I mean, that's okay. uh, that, that's that's um, and that's when modern times are coming. The union is really uh, the unionism is uh, uh, th that brought modern times quicker uh, to, to, to this country and, and to the world. I mean, the other places in the world. And so that uh, I was there less than three years, and uh, I, I, I ran uh, for steward. Oh, you did. Okay. The, the, the okay. Lowest, yeah. Well, you, you, sure. you mentioned your uncle. Did did you get the job at Warner Gear because of a connection with this relative? Uh, no, I mean, he was a steward, and he was a, uh, no, uh, okay. no, because if if I told him he's my uncle, oh, okay. I didn't tell him he's my uncle. Okay. Okay. But they was told them they might not have hired my mom. Oh, okay. I, mean, I might be a renegade, uh, okay. or a union, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah. what he was. And so I, I ran for steward, and, and I was steward for several years. And, uh, I, and I served, uh, well, just about every office uh, on the board, uh, uh, board of directors, uh, okay. the local 287, you okay. know. And, uh, and then uh, uh, the Offices, uh, you know, uh, like Sergeant Arms, all the right. way through, and all that. 
then I, in, uh, in, in 1951 and 52, uh, I, uh, a few years in a row, ran for the negotiating committee, okay. uh, representing Plant 2, which is uh, here in town. Right. And uh, so uh, I served uh, 51 and 52 uh, on the negotiating committee. And we had small test strikes okay. in uh, 51 and 52. And what, what were the issues there? Uh, the issues of all working conditions, uh, insurance, uh, and we were turning a little bit more, getting uh, the, the per hour, don't get it. I mean, the one year always paid well. I mean, they were okay. the best in town. Oh, really? Okay. Really, back at, uh, the, the, back at that time. Yeah. And, uh, and, and uh, so uh, then, uh, that, uh, as I say, that uh, in, 50, in 1952, uh, there's uh, most of those Wildcat strikes, and that's when, uh, uh, that was the same year of, uh, uh, that the national, uh, we didn't go along with the national agreement with uh, UAW, we were, uh, we were left alone, I mean, we didn't choose to go that way. Uh, and, and the Ball of Ruther and, and, uh, and the group, you know, they, uh, they try to press us real hard as individuals up in Detroit. We, uh, we made several trips up there, and, yeah. and he would talk to us. And, and but, uh, but uh, so you went up and talked to Walter Ruther? Oh yes, yeah. and I was on his national steering committee uh, for two years, appointed by him. Of course, yeah. he appointed several dozens yeah, right. on the national steering committee yeah. for re-election each time. Uh -huh. yeah. Then, then he had a brother, uh, Victor. Course, uh, Victor, Victor, yeah. Victor, yeah, and he took care of all the overseas uh, uh, organizing different uh, yeah. uh, unions and, and various yeah. places uh, elsewhere overseas. Yeah. But uh, I was on the uh, National Street Committee. But anyway, and back in 1952, that uh, that was when the, the big three uh, they went on strike. You know, General Motors and Ford and, right. and, and, and Chrysler and. Yeah. and uh, and then they uh, they got uh, got everything settled, and we were on our Wildcats right, and uh, and uh, so the big three settled, but you guys hadn't settled. And we hadn't settled. No, we were, uh, in fact uh, right near the end when they settled with uh, with the big three, that uh, you know you think about this. I mean, they were sticking out here like a sore thumb. Yeah. That uh, that uh, they were settled, and and we got some. Uh, Communications from uh, Waller, uh, Ruther himself, president, yeah. and, uh, and and to go back to work, go back to work immediately, and we didn't go back to work immediately. And well, <laughs> I said we uh, on the negotiating committee, yeah. and <clears throat> it's hard to control when a bunch of uh, people on strike, yeah. and a lot of them has uh, got a part-time job, yeah. a lot of them uh, is not uh, uh, wasn't treated well, and they want to stay out and, and yeah. get the, our demands. And uh, but uh, we were summoned by uh, again Walter Bruiser uh, up to D Detroit, you know. And uh, did we ever get a tongue license on that? Really? And it'd go back to work. You go down and go back to work. I mean, uh, he could uh, well even uh, talked about it. He could, uh, could pull a charter if he wanted to, you know. If uh, we didn't go back to work now, uh, we had our bylaws. They had their you know the big uh, the national Greek agreement, which yeah. most UAW belong to the national agreement, right. whatever uh, they set up there, uh, and uh, they would, uh, uh, in negotiations, and, and, and some of the bigger places, uh, that uh, Walter himself uh, that uh, would come in at the early end, I mean, when he came in, I mean, he, yeah. he this is it, and uh, it's no, for, I mean, made a believer out of most companies, uh, yeah. like well, whether it be in Ohio yeah, or sure. maybe, okay. and uh, and put them back to work, or or, uh, or they tell them that we're not going back to work. They're not going back to work until uh, you come through. So uh, that, uh, but when we were summing up there, we we come back, and uh, after uh, uh, a guy named Charles Dawson was yeah. president uh, back then. Here. Here. Yeah. And uh, so that after we was up there, and uh, we decided when we come back, that we better go back to work. Because uh, you know, like the, we 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 just didn't know uh, how uh, uh, how uh, how far that uh, he would go with us. And how, how long and had you been out at that time? 
been out. Yeah, it's on strike. Uh, yeah, well, we were, we're had been out uh, about two months. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. about two months or maybe two and a half months. It is quite a while. Yeah. And, uh, of course, we had, had a few slip through, you know, uh, of course, we call them scabs, you yeah, know, sure. and, and, and had a little, uh, well, the police was out there a few times. Out you of know, gear? Uh, out at, well, uh, out at, uh, Plant three, plant three out on, yeah. on 32. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, there were little scuffles out there, and uh, and some of the uh, there there was some some of the supervisors. They were just uh, they were just bad. I mean, uh, they they didn't care if, uh, you know, what you say or what you uh, asking or are reasonable or not. I mean, some of them just uh, uh, and but there was a lot of good supervisors too. I mean, uh, they were not. Uh, and they didn't help us or negotiate or anything like that, but uh, that uh, they, uh, a lot of good supervisors, they understood what we were after, and, uh, and we wanted the end it uh, real soon, too, uh, but yeah. we wanted the, our demands, but back then, that, uh, as I say, it was the times that I, uh, it was actually, and I look back on myself, I mean, it wasn't me, but uh, that brought on, uh, High wages yep. throughout the country, and that brought on modern times uh, that uh, people could uh, buy a house and, and pay for a house or have a house built yep. and uh, get money. And uh, and I I did when I worked at Warner uh, that later that I uh, I was a board operator and that was uh, excuse me uh, that uh, I was uh, that was one of the highest paid uh, jobs and, and as a machine operator it uh, it was technical. Uh, and uh, things like that. Uh, that, uh, that's a challenge to me, so sure. something that, uh, technical. I got uh, two, two questions. One, I want to go back and ask you, since you had some contact with him, what, what, what's your opinion of Walter Ruther? What do you think of him? I think he, he was a great, uh, one of the greatest men in, in, in the country. Now, they, uh, uh, that, uh, there had been talk about him, just like uh, uh, later, you know, when I'm a graduate of the FBI at the National Academy. Uh, like uh, they say a lot of things after they're gone. Uh, like they do the uh, J. Edgar Hoover, or Mr. Hoover. But uh, but he went to Russia you know, over there, and he uh, uh, with his brother uh, yeah. Victor. Yeah. And he he uh, they uh, you know that's when they were our enemies. They they were yeah. our allies. Or something. Right. Right. And uh, so <laughs> they uh, uh, they. Uh, they uh, uh, a lot of them they say, you know, he he's uh, he he was a uh, like uh, he he was a communist, but he he was no way in the world he be he and uh, of course uh, going back to the day, uh, they fought communism more than any any two people in the, in the world. I mean, including uh, the yeah. president uh, and others all the way down. Yeah. And uh, but uh, but anyway that. Uh, uh, after uh, those negotiations were over, and uh, and of course uh, Walter and himself, uh, that he was, uh, I mean, he let his guard down when we were up there. I mean, he gave us the ultimatum, but uh, but uh, but uh, and then after the end, uh, his uh, re-elections yeah. appointed uh, uh, two different years. That was uh, back in the 50s, uh, 57, 50, uh, 56 or 57. Uh, I, was, I was on. Uh, I was appointed by him on the National Steering Committee, oh, okay. and that was sort of an honor thing. It was a newspaper, yeah. uh, you yeah. know. And uh, me and uh, my Joe Douglas, which he's uh, he's deceased. And was it uh, Joe, Joe Douglas? Joe Douglas. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In fact, uh, he was president uh, at the time that uh, well, the first time I went to, it, and we both conventions were held mm -hmm. in Atlantic City, New right. Jersey, mm -hmm. and uh, so. Uh, that uh, I uh, did my thing like uh, the others. I mean, uh, to uh, you didn't have to listen too much. I mean, he he was. Uh, I mean, a lot of people think almost like he's God, but of course he wasn't <laughs> near that. Uh, I don't say that. But he was a, he was a labor leader. He was a good speaker, uh, and yeah. and he uh, that um, uh, he he didn't browse around uh, when. When business uh, meeting is over, the convention, you know, and, uh, and he gave his uh, talk, and I'd love to hear him talk. Uh, and uh, he's a very good speaker. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but uh, as far as him rubbing elbows with the guys, uh, 
uh, you know, in the evenings and, yeah. and out on the town. No, no. Okay. You didn't see him anymore. He went into his room and, and, yeah. and did his, if he had paperwork to do or, yeah. or uh, that, you didn't see him anymore. You, you didn't see him out in play. Of course, uh, he, uh, you know, he was, uh, was out in Detroit, uh, you know, he'd, uh, He'd been shot at three times, yeah. but he was hit once, and he was shot once. Yeah. And I, I, I don't remember exactly whether I was in Detroit or, or someplace out east, uh, that he, uh, uh, and, and he would, uh, he told about that, that I, that uh, I have uh, been different places, I mean, he named over a lot yeah. of places then, uh, and of course I've been kicked around, uh, and, and and, uh, and I know some of you have to, and some of them have. I mean, uh, when they tried to organize, they'd, they'd, they'd uh, uh, be heated in a group of people. Uh, uh, you got two sides here, uh, yeah. like a company, uh, what we call a company of people, and, yeah. and the union people. But uh, you get a group of people together, and things uh, uh, come up, and, and, and it's hard to control a lot of those people uh, like that. I mean, yeah. some of them are. I mean, real hotheads in the in the first place, and but a lot of them were, were uh, uh, people. I mean, uh, I never was much of a pusher on the, uh, violence. I I was very much opposed uh, to do vandalism at the last place in my here in Muncie, uh, Muncie Gear, yeah. and there was some vandalism and some things done there, which I wasn't there, wasn't around right. there, but they reported it, and some of our people uh, at uh, any. When I was at Warnock here, uh, local 287, of course, uh, others on strike, we would uh, <coughs> stop by and yeah. assist them and, sure. and, and, uh, and stand with them. And, yeah. and uh, if it's in uh, uh, cool weather, we'd uh, yeah. stand around the fire and drink coffee yeah. and, uh, and, you know, to yeah. get to, uh, in unity as uh, uh, union people. And, and mostly, uh, of course, we sucked in UAW primarily. Yeah. Right. Right. And, uh, and, uh, and UAW, I mean, you take the, uh, the Teamsters and all those uh, that, uh, well, you know the record on those, and, yeah, and sure. their, their president or former president is probably, uh, he's, he's <laughs> is probably 20 foot in cement. So you're uh, talking uh, about Jimmy Hoffa. Yeah, Jimmy Hoffa, yeah, right. that's right. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> but as I say, uh, we, uh, <clears throat> the average person in, uh, uh, the UAW and uh, you, know, the, you got your steel workers and all of the others, right. but the UAW to me, uh, they were the the, the, the cleanest. I say the cleanest. I mean that's not uh, a good uh, language, I guess, but uh, uh, about the cleanest uh, national union that there were, yeah. and there was nobody, Bull uh, Ruther, Victor, or any of the top. Nobody was indicted uh, for anything yeah. or taken to task like. Uh, yeah. Jimmy Hoffa and a lot right. of others, and yeah. the Teamsters, and and some yeah. other uh, steel workers. But steel workers, uh, not, they were, I don't know, locally Claude Bechtel, he's deceased too. I mean, he, uh, Claude Bechtel? Yeah. yeah. And he was the uh, he, he's a steel worker of union yeah. representative. Yeah, correct. And now in Detroit. Yeah. And, uh, and I knew him for many years. Right. Uh, same time I was after the union, and he was, uh, I thought that. that that's a good job. He, he got, you know, <laughs> automobile furnace, and, and uh, he was a national. Uh, uh, he would. Uh, he had so many uh, locals and other uh, who go to and and uh, help negotiate and help settle and and uh, this other guy and and Claude Bechtel. Anyone ever knows him? Mean, he's sort of easy going guy, but on the other hand, he's uh, he can talk tough too. Yeah. And uh, he he was uh, he was a very well, he was a very intelligent man, uh, and of course his son, uh, well, son-in-law, yeah. uh, Ron True, was, uh, he was fire chief, uh, and, yeah. uh, and so... Uh, his last name was True? Yeah, Ron T True. T-R-U-E. Uh, yeah. yeah. And yeah, just like, like before I said... I, before I forget, i got to just get this for the record here. Right. Right. Tell me what Warner Gear actually made. What, what did people... What did they what did they make in Warner Gear? We talk about Warner Gear. Okay. A lot of people, you know, younger yeah, than right. me, sure. they don't know about that. That's right. Yeah. Warner Gear, <clears throat> primarily, almost wholly, for years, the Ford Matic. Okay. That is the first automatic transmission. Now, believe that this is this is uh, yeah. you can check on that. Uh, Ford Matic 
uh, there was a person who <coughs> wanted to gear, worked in his laboratory, and uh, they invented the Fordomatic okay. transmission. Okay. The Fordomatic transmission. Yeah. And then, um, of course, Ford, the motor company uh, that uh, that uh, they been, they paid him yeah. uh, a certain amount of uh, monies for yeah. his uh, invention. Uh-huh. And uh, it went on so many years, I can't tell you how many. I don't okay. know how many. But finally, they bought his uh, uh, his patent from him, and yeah. they, they uh, had it solely. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Ford uh, the Motor Company finally did. But uh, when the Ford Matic in the Ford, not Chrysler or those other, yeah. that uh, then <clears throat> they started making uh, uh, in over in, in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, the uh, Ford plant there, uh, was, uh, and they didn't have. Uh, uh, too good luck. Uh, I mean, uh, rejects on, on the transmission. Uh, I mean, uh, the one out the workers here out here. I mean, they just they got used to. I mean, they, they were trained well and, yeah. and 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 they they did good work. I mean, at first, I'm sure they had a lot of scrap uh, yeah. things, but and then also they started uh, 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 Ford uh, transmission plant. I keep saying Ford, but that's uh-huh. primarily. Yeah. But uh, Decatur, Illinois, and that's oh, okay. that, that's sure. uh, just well, yeah. Deca- I, I lived. Yeah, you didn't live too far be, 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 between uh, Decatur and Springfield. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's where I grew up yeah. on the farm, and uh, but uh, they uh, started a plant over there, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, they hired a lot of those farm boys over there, you know, yeah, and sure. and it's not as much industrialized uh, even Decatur uh, yeah. as uh, I mean they got the Staley's there, you yeah. know, and they yeah. right. got some. Uh, plants like that, yeah. but uh, uh, that we ended up uh, uh, redoing a lot. Uh, you know, when I was there uh, the, to here at the Muncie, oh. uh, doing yeah. a, a lot of uh, uh, the scrap. I mean, doing a lot of scrap, and and, oh, and, and they would uh, uh, run them through uh, certain uh, anodizers, and, uh-huh. and and we would rerun them. And uh-huh. they had didn't have to, uh, too good a success. Uh, over there in the kitchen, it was a large plant. Uh, oh. uh, they, I don't know, they employed, I think, a couple thousand, okay. and uh, so uh, that uh, uh, now, as far as you then, over yeah. there, I, yeah. I, I wasn't involved in right, right, right. and and only uh, here and uh, local, and uh, uh, but uh, uh, but and then others on the transmission in. That uh, uh, that they uh, started. Uh, I don't know which which was next. Uh, oh, okay. Chrysler or, uh, yeah. or GM uh, that uh, started making automatic yeah. transmission. So so and some guy comes to you and, and says uh, sees you on the street and says, okay, Cordell, what did your plant really make during the days when they were really making a lot of stuff and they were really booming? You'd say automatic transmissions. Automatic transmission. Okay. Uh, they were automatic transmission. And manual transmissions okay. too, okay. Uh, and uh, they made those uh, uh, for automobiles, and also other like um, uh, tow motors, uh, and uh, that was a small transmission, uh, and um, a lot of uh, farm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Farm. Uh, like m- tractors. Yeah. And stuff yeah. Like that? yeah. Okay. Uh, transmissions. Uh, yeah. yeah. They, uh, you know, they caught on here. Here's the here's the first four bag uh, automatic, and and I, I uh, and then they started making all kind. I mean, uh, they, uh, what they call setups. I mean, yeah. you'd uh, quit making port transmission, and right. then you'd uh, have and the setup, setup yeah. and you get so much money uh, per hour per right. setup time, oh, okay. and go to uh, and then you'd run yeah. so th- maybe so several thousand, uh, yeah, for a tow motor or uh, uh, or uh, well manual transmission. Uh, uh, they were running that uh, wind all along uh, before the uh, for the Matic. Yeah, before uh, the automatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh, that's uh, that, that, that's what they, they did. And, and, oh, okay. uh, and uh, as I say, they would come in. Uh, uh, I mean, from the foundry, uh, they they didn't have a foundry. Right. The uh, the transmission case itself, all different sizes, and it goes through uh, trucks. Uh, I mean, uh, semis or you mm-hmm. know. Uh, Big yeah. trucks, little trucks, and all. And uh, this boy, I was, say I was a board operator, right. and I would get the raw uh, case, and 
the big truck transmission, it was like that. I mean, yeah. you had to sort of bounce that. You used that <laughs> thing because, it, you know, it was heavy. And, yeah. it, I mean, it wasn't heavy to lift, yeah. but you lift it all day. Yeah. And, make it, you know, and they, they weighed around 98 pounds, or almost 100 pounds. And, but anyway, to support the upper, uh, yeah. uh, it went on the spindle, and there was uh, eight uh, spindles, and yeah. they would go around and around, and, and uh, <laughs> carbaloy tips uh, that yeah. cut the yeah. ends of them off, and, and that's, uh, that, that's okay. what I did. How, how would you describe the, the degree of difficulty of that kind of work? I mean, was, it, was it really, when you look back on that, would you define that as that was really hard work? Uh, uh, that was hard work. work. Uh, well, it, it was more uh, uh, like in plant two as a board operator, uh, yeah. but uh, but the, the the dust, dust in the air, right. uh, that, uh, that 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 was uh, that's what I, I didn't like the most. I mean, right. parts of work uh, when I first uh, hired in as a, just a machine operator. Right. I mean, anybody can run drills and one thing and another. You know, and that's why I started over in plant one. Right. And um, plant one, two, yeah. uh, here in town, it's 30 out there. Yeah. And so uh, that uh, uh, I, uh, I thought, well, make more money. Uh, oh, okay. That I, uh, that's a challenge to me and the uh, board yeah. operator. And uh, and and they had all different, uh, uh, they call a, a meal that right. that's a server. And that's the first one, and I was the second one, and then a lot of the machinery down, down okay. the line. Okay. But uh, that. Uh, but the uh, the dust, uh, uh, and but after I left Warner Year, and of course, as I say, I took a leave absence later on, right. and on a different kind of ways. I'm going. Yeah. That uh, it was two years after I left, I, I put a white shirt on, uh, oh, go to a meeting or a church or wherever, that I, I'd be sweating. It's still yellow. What would, would come through, and but uh, you think. Uh, my gosh, you breathe that, and we use air hoses, I had to use air hoses, you know, oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the shavings, yeah. I had to blow them off to yeah. put the next strand of the case on. And uh, so uh, that, uh, uh, that, that, that was, uh, uh, you'd think uh, uh, people would get things wrong with their lungs, I mean, they would get in their lungs yeah. and they would, you know, it wouldn't be good at all. Right. But apparently uh, there's not a case that I know of. Yeah. That, and we didn't have any, and, uh, and of course I didn't have any uh, in the lungs. Yeah. And of course <laughs> I got a, a, a blow. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was, was, was 287 at that time when the labor force was really large in Muncie, and they had a lot of different plants in Muncie, was 287 the largest union? Yeah, okay. yeah it, it was uh, always the largest union and, and the largest employment uh, okay. uh, <clears throat> as far as uh, uh, factories are concerned. Yeah. And uh, uh, Chevrolet, I mean, you know, they were they were small, and they grew over the years. Mm -hmm. And I was reading a paper the other day about you know when they uh, uh, what, March uh, there. That's that's the end of it. I mean, that's too bad in a way. That's yeah. the end of it. And then they're going to bulldoze all that new park down, uh, all that. Of course, they say you know that the uh, land is worth more. I mean, yeah. with, uh, naturally, they bulldoze it down. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. That and for sure. Yeah. And but uh, uh, what else? Well, I, I want to ask you a little bit about uh, your view of the relationship between labor and management during the years you were involved with the union. Yeah, uh, that, that that first, the, uh, which uh, uh, I only worked at, uh, I, I worked at her uh, thirteen years, right. and uh, and. Uh, as I say, that uh, at first, I, uh, I, before I was a union steward, if you were an official out there, you didn't get laid off. Okay. And, uh, uh, and to be honest with you, that's, uh, that, that I believed in uh, what I heard about union, right. and I believed in both, and, uh, and, and uh, that uh, after there was, uh, well, almost three years I was there, and it was, as I stated, uh, I ran for office. But, but, uh, the, uh, the 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 company union at first I, I could I could see it uh, it was mellowing out more and and uh, we got what we were after and of course we had the strikes and we had the wildcat the, the assembly line out there they, they were the worst and they uh, all of them they were very 
No, they, they were closer. It seemed like they were all buddies on the assembly line. All of them, you know, one of them thinks, all of them thinks they talk about, the, you know, and they'd walk out. And of course, that would, uh, when they'd walk out, and, and they would threaten, uh, the company would threaten, uh, you know, if you don't come back, we'll go our party and all that kind of stuff. And of course, that would affect us too. And, and uh, I say us, other parts of the plant right. uh, have to go down, right. uh, making uh, parts for the Ford transmission. Right. Sure. And, and, uh, but uh, it got better uh, to me uh, that um, since 1947, when I uh, went there and, and, and up, uh, uh, they had uh, the good relations were uh, coming more and more in, uh, well, in, in the past middle 50s. On, and then I, I left. Uh, uh, I took a year to leave after I could have went back. Uh, that's, that's when I. Uh, um, I uh, seem like it, uh, there, there are things that were happening and uh, up and down and and and, and later on uh, uh, that uh, that I thought well uh, uh, th this is uh, the factor work uh, which uh, I just uh, been there uh, I mean uh, to me that was a long time back then yeah. uh, 13 years but uh, I, I thought I wanted to uh, I'd be a fireman okay. and on you know, the fire department, you know, and I, and I knew a few of those guys, which I only knew two or three uh, yeah. uh, policemen, and uh, Tui, uh, uh, Mayor Tui, uh, Mayor Tui, uh, that he was mayor then, and then uh, I was elected, I was on the city council uh, right. back uh, uh, then before uh, I went on the police department, I was working more here. Did, did your union activities help you to get into the city council? Oh, yeah, like oh, definitely, okay. definitely. and. And every office I ran for, I mean, yeah. uh, certainly there, there was uh, people I knew, and they knew me, and right. and and there were a uh, certain number of people. Uh, I uh, uh, I ran for office in uh, in the union all those years, and yeah. and uh, uh, I I won every time except one time, yeah. and that's uh, that's uh, well that's a little bit. Causing me to, uh, well, psychologically, and uh, uh, and, and Kenny Fox, uh, he ran for re-election, and, and and some of the things that uh, his last name B O Kenny B O B O G G yes. B O G G Fox, and, and Johnny Wells, uh, he was he was a loud mouth. I mean, he uh, put out the Labor Beacon, you know, the yeah. newspaper we right. had, and uh, and to say that uh, I uh, some of the things were going on. Uh, and they were forming little groups, and I mean, I almost had uh, sort of hate groups. And then the way I looked at them, I, and other guys were talking about it getting getting serious. And uh, uh, but the other things too that I thought, uh, mm -hmm. well, uh, that uh, I, I was vice president under uh, uh, Joe Douglas when he right. was president, right. and that's when went to Manic City. But uh, uh, that I ran against uh, Kenny Boggs in. Uh, and he had a uh, well, had uh, a heart failure, and oh. I didn't use that against him yeah, right. like that. But uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I I came uh, real close uh, beating him, but I, I didn't. I mean, that's the only, only time yeah. I ever ran in the unit that uh, I didn't get elected. I, I ran for well, like when I was elected to that, uh, yeah. you know, to go to Atlantic City, and, and then. Uh, uh, the uh, AFL-CIO before yeah. it split up, I, right. I was elected to, that, to the, uh, that was on Willard Street uh, right. upstairs, you know, in those years. Well, do, uh, do, you, do you think that the relationships between labor and management were getting worse by the time you decided to leave? Yeah, in, in a lot of ways. Uh, that uh, uh, they, uh, I don't know, they, I, I, they had to, Training, schooling. I'm talking about the supervisor personnel, the right. head of the, uh, and and they join and other companies, other uh, like automakers. They would come together and yeah. and they had their uh, meetings and and how they're going to uh, cope with this problem or that problem where the union would come up with. But yeah, uh, they uh, uh, they sort of smooth things out there and and, and uh, m making more. Uh, uh, well, public relations type, more okay. intelligent type of decision, uh, uh, treating the guys uh, just a little better, maybe uh, 
in a discussion with them and not get in big arguments like uh, they have in the line. And they just roughshod in the past, you know. Yeah. And yes, they they uh, uh, they were getting better and and had to say that. Uh, and then later, uh, say I, I took the uh, uh, the year leave absence and. Uh, yeah, why why did you do that? Uh, okay, I, I wanted to be a fireman. I thought, well, oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I, I'm looking at a pension now. Uh, that uh, one year, uh, that I would have to work there uh, at 60, you know, until the 6 o'clock. I'd have to work there 47 years. Right. I went there, uh, that, yeah. you know, when I was young. Uh, I, my, you know, I had got service. Uh, yeah. Was 19. And, uh, but uh, the, 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 uh, the pension, the pension in 20 and 20 years, uh, yeah. uh, fire department was 25 years uh, right. at then when I took my leave of absence. And, uh, and well, before I took my leave of absence, I, uh, I uh, didn't run for the council anymore. And and I thought uh, then I wanted to uh, do the fire department. That was, uh, the same, two or three guys there. Yeah. And yeah, but the salary was better at Warner Gear. Uh, yeah, does that, that, uh, yeah, that's true. But on the other hand, uh, that uh, when uh, back when I wasn't uh, elected or something, I was I was laid off. Uh, oh, I okay. called back, called back, laid off, okay. and then I had the first child. I had two children. So you wanted more security. More security. That's what I was looking at okay. uh, most of all, and uh, I knew the salary uh, was low, yeah. but uh, you know, uh, in time it, it'll yeah. be, get better. Right. Surely get better. Uh, and with the union's help and uh, yeah. all, and that's the way it did. And, I mean, the uh, and then right, yeah. I, I went to Mary Cooley, after Mary Cooley, I, I went to his wife, uh, Mary Cooley's, uh, she, uh, her funeral this other yeah. day, or, or Saturday. Yeah. And, but uh, uh, I went to Mary uh, uh, Tooley, and, uh, and you know, he's a, he was an easy going guy. And, uh, <laughs> And I said, uh, you know, after I, I was a precinct commitment. Yeah. Uh, of course, I'm a Democrat, you know. Yeah, right. And, uh, so am I. And, and, and so I, uh, I, I went to him uh, uh, personally. Well, uh, I'll take uh, Gene Teal and, and Delbert Christie, uh, both of them to see in my court. And uh, they went with me and, and uh, made to make the big push. And uh, after I uh, went off the council and I thought, you know, precinct commitment, Back then, that's before uh, Merit Commission, uh, Merit Law, and all that kind of stuff. But uh, they just had, I went, to, uh, we went to Merit uh, Tui, and I told them, I said, I, uh, Mayor, I, I uh, uh, the fire department, I, uh, uh, of course, the guys would, uh, uh, they weren't sitting on the pinch all the time, but uh, yeah. as I say, I thought uh, that would be a close-knit group, uh, fire department, and uh, you know, yeah, and, and not, well, I mean, a certain amount of danger to it. Yeah, and sure. on the other hand, uh, you know, you just got to use good, good common right, sense. Right. And uh, so uh, that uh, I went to him, and, and I really got upset uh, when I went to him. And, but on the later, the, the, I praised him that uh, they just had uh, the first fire school, and they had, uh, I, I said to the mayor, uh, to it. I said, I want to go on the fire department. I know there's there's some openings going to right. be soon, and I, I went on the fire department. And he turned to me and looked me right in the eye. Cordell, we just had the first fire school. That's before the American Commission and Merit Law. Uh, we just had, and there, there's uh, uh, 14 or 16, 14 or 16, one or the other, uh, that have finished the first fire school, and. Uh, and that people, as long as I'm mayor, uh, that the policemen and the firemen, you know, policemen haven't had any yet, uh, yeah. other than this uh, in sight. And uh, uh, this is the first fire school they ever had. And uh, they got to quali be qualified and testing and all that, and agility and tests, you know, all. And uh, I, I can't do that. I, I can't uh, put you on there in front of all the, those people. <laughs> and you know, those, uh, those people, uh, they were the commitment, uh, they yeah. hadn't uh, been actually unions, and they didn't get him a lot of votes, uh, <laughs> you know, they get elected mayor. And so, uh, that's, uh, uh, that, uh, I went away huffy, I said, well, I'm very disappointed, uh, Mayor, that, uh, that uh, I understand what you're saying, and, and that's good. 
this reading, uh, uh, that, that's good. But uh, I, uh, I, I, I still want to go on the fire department. And he said, I, I can't do that, Cordell. I told you now. And then he come back and he said, uh, uh, you know, we're going to start a, a, a police recruit school by next. And uh, and you have always been active. You've been here. You've been you've been active in the union and all, and and, and you've been working hard in the in the party, and uh, the police department. Now there's going to be some of they come up there, and we're going to have the first school, and uh, that uh, I think you would like police work better than you would firemen. I said I don't want to be so and so. Uh, policeman, you know, I never dreamed about it. You know, okay, you know, kids, uh, young kids will, uh, they all, I want to be a policeman. And of course, they want to be a fireman, you know. But uh, I, that's as much as my answer to him. I, I don't, I, no, I don't want to forget it, forget it. And we walked out, and and, uh, and so uh, I stood for uh, a week or two or so. And of course, when I told him, I, I, this, I did this uh, as a wife. Uh, that I, I, I dropped a bombshell on her. I told her, I said, you know, this factory work and the pension, I'd have to work, uh, work at one year, uh, I'd have to work uh, 47 years, and, and I'm going to put in an application for the police department. Yeah, I, I think I, that, that uh, I could, uh, and, oh, oh, you're going on the police department, yeah, and there, and, and what do you think about me, me and and the kids? I had a boy and a girl, you know, they were very young men, and uh, and some of my boys an engineer, and my daughter works at uh, Hillcroft, oh, okay. and uh, uh, takes care of a 16 year old, yeah. had a wreck, she's uh, 50 something now, but yeah. she's got a 16 year old mind, oh. and uh, so that uh, uh, I, I dropped out on her, and oh, it was it was cold around the house, my house back then for uh, a week or two. And finally, she said, "I know you. You're not going to be happy uh, that uh, uh, you've got your mind made up. And uh, go ahead, uh, go ahead, and, and put an application. But uh, when you get hurt, uh, you know, it's like for put on the uniform and you go down the streets, people going to start shooting at you, you yeah. know, and." Uh, but uh, she went along with it, and but uh, as I say, uh, looking back, I mean, I, 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 and I got, I enjoyed the police department. A lot of it I didn't, but most of all I did, and and the schools that became available yeah. uh, during my uh, 23 years uh, with the department, that uh, that uh, uh, getting appointed, uh, and talk about politics. If politics back in J. Edgar Hoover was a director, that the, the if politics was involved in any of it at all, you're washed out. Yeah. You you don't go. Huh. And he won. He was a, a run the FBI with an, yeah. an iron hand, you know. And and to me, uh, that I I could see that that was good. Yeah. yeah but I mean, but how things change. But anyway, that uh, I uh, uh, went to. Uh, that was 1969. Yeah. Uh, and I went on to the department in 1960 uh, of uh, January. And, uh, well, you started and, out going to the firefighters. You ended up as a police chief. Uh, yeah, yeah. And ended up uh, going to the first, first police chief, uh, I mean, first uh, police school that uh, I ended up with. And, and I, I didn't make the highest grade, but I knew yeah. that the top. Yeah. But I've been around and, and say, the common sense uh, tests and, and all what they uh, taught us. Uh, Dale Panatter, he was, he was yeah. the chief then, yeah. and he was deceased. Yeah. <laughs> the only people on the yeah. home on yeah. left. But, uh, but I, uh, that was a highlight, being chief of police, uh, certainly, oh, yeah. uh, uh, for all those years yeah. uh, that uh, I didn't, in, uh, I mean, all in all, I, I enjoyed it, I took it at heart, and uh, there's a, when you take a job like that, <clears throat> you automatically get labeled. I mean, you know, pay off this and that. Yeah. But believe me, I played it straight down the line. Right before me, yeah. there was another chief. Yeah. He was invited twice, yeah, and, right, uh, right. and so. But anyway, that uh, yeah. uh, that when I went uh, in, uh, when I was appointed uh, chief of police, uh, uh, well, uh, of course, the merit commission <laughs> was there. They had the OK too, yeah. and uh, testing and so forth, and uh, so. Uh, 
that uh, I enjoyed uh, yeah. that, and, and and part of that, of course, I, I graduated from the FBI Academy, right. and then you know, and and the uh, uh, college credit points uh, for the University of Virginia, right. and uh, of course. Uh, my wife, she started dragging some things out. I oh, I'd say, well, you'd probably like to see them. Yeah. Well, let, let yeah. me ask you a question, because I want to get back to the union activity. Yeah. One of the questions that's interested me about Muncie is that the firefighters have a union and the police don't. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, <clears throat> uh, there's laws. Uh, the police, uh, there's laws that they, uh, they, the police, uh, uh, you can't have a union. Okay. Okay. But, we have the FOP, Fraternal right. Order of Police. Right. Right. That's that's one and the same. Okay. I mean, and, but we wasn't allowed to have a union. Right. And uh, and and far as they, it took a while. Uh, I mean, as far as negotiation, the fire department they were the big dog. Yeah. You know, they had a union yeah. and they had right. backing of other right. unions. Right. Right. And the police department there's uh, uh, there was a lot of guys on there that uh, uh, well almost. Anti-union, or oh, really? maybe their dad or grandfather was yeah. in management or something, right. and uh, yes, that was a different ball game. Yeah. And uh, and of course they used to kid me about uh, about there's the old union guy or you yeah. know and yeah. and those things. But the fire department, but they took uh, they were the top dog in the beginning. But uh, yeah. but in recent years when I, when I was chief and 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 the FOP. Uh, uh, Ever since then, except this year, or I mean, uh, this uh, past one, yeah. uh, that uh, the fire department, uh, we led it all the way, FOP, and negotiated, and, and the fire department uh, got with them, and they agreed what uh, our people uh, uh, agreed to. And uh, and so, uh, but they made so we made a quick decision on some things. Uh, of course, we knew that it was. Okay, and so the, yeah, the insurance they had to give back some. Yeah, well, we 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 realized that, and and the firemen did too. But but uh, they they gave back just a little too much. Oh. Uh, they, uh, they sold uh, really the whole program negotiations, uh, uh, like on uh, uh, prescriptions. Right. That's a big thing, and especially for older people, yeah. uh, such as uh, well, I'm such as us. Uh, us. Yeah. Us. That's right. And uh, it's not going to cost you anything. Yeah. They negotiated with the the people out of Canada. And they're going to get the, the, all these pre prescriptions from Canada. Yeah. Well, they kept selling that and sold that all the way through, and that's all right. Uh, yeah. You know, free prescription. Of course, it was only cost us five dollars yeah, with, uh, right. yeah. with the other uh, insurance yeah. we have, and yeah. it'll it'll terminate at the end of the year. Even and then, uh, then uh, there's other areas that uh, that uh, we uh, lost on. I mean, uh, but. Uh, the, the, the prescriptions coming out of Canada <clears throat> that uh, they had some meetings and oh, yeah. prescription. I thought, oh, this is all right. Yeah. Uh, they they have to be the same. I mean, yeah. you know, the pharmaceutical companies, right. you know, and uh, but uh, <clears throat> but the second meeting I had uh, with the city and uh, with the assistant uh, mayor, and she uh, really. Uh, uh, well, she went overboard about selling that. You get the free, all free. Yeah. Well, when it came right down to it, the last meeting we had, uh, and, and the firemen, they agreed uh, to accept the whole thing, what the other things they negotiated, and about the health insurance and all this right. and that. And it was settled. Then they had the meeting, uh, and I was, uh, all, everyone's invited to the yeah. meeting. And uh, but the uh, majority of them didn't go, but yeah. I always went to the meetings. And, and uh, so, uh, they had a, a list that went up and down, an old type list, all, all the, the things that the, the, uh, the prescriptions mm -hmm. uh, that uh, uh, you get them free. Well, uh, we did, the, the one, we got them free, but they were a lot less, the city was had the pen, they would pay for oh. them, but they were like yeah. half price or less than oh, half okay. price from Canada, oh. uh, from this organization yeah. they negotiated yeah. with. and. Uh, but then come on up a little more here, and getting close, and, and they uh, distribute these uh, uh, type pages, all yeah. uh, all the things, and uh, and then about the contract, they had a meeting, so we had a meeting about the FOP lodge, and uh, and then I started checking uh, my uh, my my wife, uh, yeah. she's really not in good health, uh -huh. and after I got 
yeah. this thing. Sure. <laughs> I'm basically in good health, you yeah. know. But but I take um, uh, a five, yeah. well, just one, one a day of yeah. each one of these yeah. five. Sure. Just little things, you know, it yeah. keeps you, well, whatever. <laughs> the, the doctor is not going to try yeah. to explain medical terms. And, uh, and uh, but my wife, uh, she takes six, yeah. and uh, uh, they're uh, very potent what she takes. Okay. And, and then when I take, uh, I don't well, really, I read on uh, you know, what they uh, do. And they, they keep you sort of stabilized. Yeah, right, and sure. and uh, even uh, a nervous condition, it mm -hmm. sort of cuts the edge. Yeah. Right. Not real strong. I, 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 I don't. Uh, and, but I started looking uh, on them. And, and I, I, 11, 5 and 6 is yeah. 11. Her 6 and me 5. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I, I like 11, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, she has 6 and I have 5. And, and she, there was three available from Canada. Uh, you get three, yeah. but the uh, the other uh, six, you know, and her uh, yeah. three is right. left here. And three, uh, I have to buy right direct uh, from the pharmacy here. No, uh, you know, I have to pay for them full price. And there was one of them I take. I, I, one of them, yeah. it, it cost sixty-four dollars, oh, and one a day uh, for a month. See, uh, see what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, they had, uh, uh, I haven't uh, been out talking a lot to the guys. I mean, like, uh, well, this cold weather came about, yeah. and then you the snowblower and all that. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, that, uh, that, that that's, that's going to reach in my pocket uh, yeah. that uh, I'm worse off. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, I mean, but they saw, well, you get them free. You get them free, you know. Yeah, you get them free only if they're on the list. Yeah, if you're on the list. Well, let, let me ask you some specific questions yeah. about unions, okay? But, but this, this is really fascinating. What, what do you think that unions have done for the worker? <clears throat> I think in, 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 the, in the past years uh, that, that they did a lot for the worker, the yeah. unions did. But uh, there, uh, <clears throat> after a certain period of time, I could see it uh, talking to people, uh, the, uh, whether it be business people or even uh, some guys in the shop and still, you know, belong to you. And, but uh, uh, one of these days where we're, we're going we're to, uh, the, day, the price is going to raise, uh, 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 well, uh, the transmission, whether transmission right. cases or uh, on automobiles or whatever, but uh, we're going to be hurting ourselves. Okay. We're going to price ourselves out of, out of a job. And then here comes the, the computers, yeah. and uh, and out there before I left, uh, uh, they had one that had like uh, twenty some people on one line, two, two, and ever so often they changed the little board, computer yeah. board, yeah. and it did all these drills, mills, and all these yeah. down, and it, it was it was something else. Well, in yeah. fact, next to my oldest brother it was the turn of electrician, you know, yeah. that's. I mean, uh, uh, Kim Glass, he's there 33 yeah. years, yeah. and he went to Chevrolet after Kim Glass yeah. moved out. But that's one, one reason he, he got uh, prepared and he bought him a farm out in North of Parker. Oh, okay. and, uh, and he retired uh, of, uh, knowing full well that the computers coming about, and he was scared to death of those computers, <laughs> and they uh, had him a little wiring. But that is one, and he, uh, well, he says today, that's what, uh, why I retired when I did. Huh. I mean, he, so the all automation that took place. Automation, that's yeah. right. Auto exactly. Automation and foreign competition. Yes, right. That's right. And, and he, oh, my gosh. I mean, yeah. I don't want to put words in your mouth. No. Do you, do you think that maybe the unions went too far in their demands and they got too much? Or? I, in a lot of ways, yes. I, 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 I think that... Uh, that, uh, like I started to say a while ago, that uh, they, they went uh, uh, too far. I mean, uh, they were used to making demands and, yeah. and coming through, and, and uh, they had some wildcat strikes, you know, yeah. and, and the company had to cave in. But, uh, but I could see it, I started to say a while ago. Sure. I could see it that uh, we did ourselves uh, in, in a lot of ways, and uh, well, and here, right here now, uh, yeah. in our backyard, almost uh, Chevrolet, uh, they uh, call it something else now, and uh, and they're connected with Chrysler too, yeah. and uh, 
and they're going out in March. Here's a, here's a whole plant going, yeah. going down. I mean, yeah. uh, well, the first the big one went down. I mean, the big one, Acme Lees. Yeah. Now that's that's been uh, down. Uh, I mean, from way back. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, Acme Lees. Uh, yeah. uh, they went out of business. Uh, that was back in the oh well in the early fifties. Yeah. And uh, and so that was a starting. And then then uh, there were. Uh, now, uh, on your wiser and, and let's see, a bunch of gear. Yeah. And of course, they went out. And they, uh, they they were on strike. I know I stood on picket line down there with them too a few times. And, yeah. and uh, but uh, well, uh, uh, not only here. Uh, and then and then you would uh, uh, read articles and uh, I do say about other places in Detroit. You name it. Same thing. Cincinnati, same thing. All throughout the country. And uh, and that's where automation comes in, comes in, and that was the biggest thing that they have, have okay. uh, took the uh, uh, the fight out of the union, yeah. and, and couldn't uh, they could only do so much. Two two areas I wanted to ask you about, and when you were involved with uh, UAW, did race play much of a role in union activities? Race. Yeah. Any racial any situation? No, not uh, not that I uh, encountered or even heard about. Okay. I mean. Uh, that uh, and uh, warning you now uh, now race now women that was yeah that was uh, <laughs> uh, that, uh, there was only uh, warning here to steer it away I mean that was a company and the union went along that was okay, okay. went along and not, and not hiring women okay. uh, you know up up until you know during the war uh, after yeah. the war started. Right. Uh, all the guys, you know, going in the right, serve, right, military yeah. service, you know, that's when the, when the women were hired only. And after the war, they, they didn't hire anymore. <laughs> uh, I mean, they, they did. They did yeah. later on. Well, did, but, did, did any women play any leadership roles in the union when you were working with the union? Uh, there, there were uh, a few, like three or four, uh, on some committees. And, uh, right. and well, uh, people across the street, uh, she was president uh, of one of the real small unions. Uh, like 20 people or something oh, okay. like that, but uh, not too much. Okay. Not too much. Okay. Uh, okay. As far as the female. Well, here, here's my, my big question here. My my last one, really. When I came to Muncie in the late 1960s to become part of the faculty at Ball State, Muncie was described to me as, yeah, Muncie, that's a real union town. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's changed? <laughs> Oh, it, it changed. It changed tremendously. Okay. Uh, well, you no, think that was a fair uh, description uh, then, though? Oh yes, yeah. yes. And uh, 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 I mean, the union. I mean, what are you going to organize? I mean, uh, people losing their jobs, yeah. uh, and uh, really, uh, it's uh, uh, it's a sad thing. Uh, and and uh, unions uh, today has uh, has uh, very little power. I mean, as far as the numbers, uh, and uh, and and uh, any company, uh, any manufacturing company, whether it's food or automobile or whatever, uh, that uh, they've got to make money and stay in business. Right. And uh, and all the competition and the foreign, like you mentioned earlier, right. that 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 was a big thing. I mean, my God, now now it just seemed like I mean, China and and Taiwan, <laughs> and now it's Mexico, uh, right. but. Uh, there's lots and lots of things, uh, and a lot of this, of course, I'm a Democrat, and Clinton, I thought he was a great president, yeah. except he just bed right. <laughs> then, 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 only one, like, only one bad area. Yeah, right, yeah. right. But uh, he, uh, that's, uh, he, he came into Mexico quite a bit. Now he picks things up and made in Mexico, or assembled in Mexico. Mexico. It's, made, it's made here, and got cheap wages, and in Mexico they pay him hardly nothing. I mean, very little. Sure. And uh, so that uh, Mexico is, is really uh, taking us, and and of course I I, I, I answer uh, uh, with uh, Washington. I mean, different representatives, one thing or another. Yeah. Uh, that uh, Social Security. Yeah. They come here. It, 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 these illegal aliens at the border of this country, uh, and uh, and Mexicans. You know, they can sneak through, and they have, and, they, and they've hired double and triple the number yeah. they've had before. I mean, sure. as far as uh, patrols. Yeah. Uh, uh, trying to cope with it, and uh, and it's almost an impossibility. To, I mean, you, you can't fill up a. I mean, well, uh, a wall would cost you billions of dollars. Right. <laughs> but, I'm not uh, sure that would even work. Yeah, 
and uh, it's uh, it, it's really sad. I mean, as far as a, a, the unions today, I mean, uh, they've got to uh, work with a company. Uh, you, we're going to agree to this, and you agree to this. Uh, you got to make money. We know that, but uh, we, we want to keep what we got, and we're not keeping what we got. No. I mean, in, in a sense yeah. of saying, uh, as far as the unions, uh, we're losing. The unions are losing uh, on issues and and, and health. Uh, insurance programs and things like yeah. that. Well, when you think that a person like you could go into a factory when you did and make a decent wage and after a while get good fringe benefits and you know decent working conditions, pension, etc., and you could provide, as my father-in-law did who worked for Scott Paper in Detroit, mm -hmm. you could provide for your family mm -hmm. and have a vacation and have a car and things mm -hmm. like that. All the things that Americans tend to associate with being middle-class Americans. And I guess the question I'm asking you is, it appears to me, and your perspective is different as a, a union person, that that's changing significantly in America. Oh, yes, definitely. Well, definitely. That uh, that uh, if you can get a decent wage and improve benefit, forget about it. I, I don't want that other uh, fifty cents more an hour. Right. I, I, I want the more a uh, good insurance program to yeah. take care of me uh, when I get older, yeah. or when I retire. Yeah. That uh, that's what's going to account. Yeah. And right. uh, so uh, that's uh, and the unions uh, all have have. have eventually looked at that in recent years. I mean, yeah. I'm talking about recent years, like 10, 15 yeah. years. But since then, there are more on the, about fringe benefits. Yeah. And, uh, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think about that because I was reading an article in the, uh, I'm from New York City, and I read the New York Times as a mm -hmm. kind of hometown paper. There was mm -hmm. an article yesterday by an economist who said that he simply thinks it's absolutely wrong, if not downright obscene, to have chief executives and senior management of companies making 30, 40, 50 times in salary what the average guy in the company is working. And the guy that wrote this was a Republican. So. You're exactly right. And that's, uh, that, uh, going back to uh, you know, Walter Ruther, I mentioned yeah, right. Back to him, that was part of uh, every time he'd make a speech, he, he would, when we, we were making uh, 8,000, 10,000 a year, uh, the executives, uh, they, they were making 1800000 and and, right. and there's a lot of them uh, make a half a million dollars a year. Yeah. And that, that's, they suck all the, yeah. the profits off, and then yeah. they turn the, the union, and that's where the union's losing out. Yeah. Uh, that, to me, that's entirely wrong. Yeah. Uh, pay them good yeah. wages, sure. their, their sure. know-how, their intelligence right. uh, to right. build a company, uh, make a lot of profit, uh, yeah. and but that, that should be uh, addressed. Uh, yeah. uh, well, but not not fifty or a hundred times what the average guy is making. No, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous, right? And there's no man worth that. I mean, yeah. uh, of course, I see where Congress uh, yeah, and Senate they both voted themselves to raise. Right. You know? yeah, yeah. And yeah. That, that sort of you know you sort of jerk uh, yeah. leg jerk on that. Yeah. But uh, you know, you know, since you mentioned this, I just throw this in. It has nothing to do with the conversation. I guess I'm just kind of interested in. It. Do you think that the United States should have a national health care program? I, 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 I feel that way, yeah. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, Edward Kennedy, I mean, uh, you know, he, uh, sure. he, he pu he's pushed that for years, yeah, know. you know, and yeah. he's got a certain amount of uh, falling, yeah. and I got letters, because uh, yeah. I get uh, uh, questionnaires. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, uh, and then once you do that, uh, yeah, well, uh, you get on the mailing right, list yeah. and everybody in the weather, <laughs> donations and everything, this and that, and then, of course, I get yeah. so much. What I think is most worthy, uh, I do that and I cut it off. The rest yeah. of them, uh, they'll they'll send you a questionnaire, but uh, they're uh, uh, they spell out that they're they're doing this themselves and they got they got to have money to go on. And uh, fifteen dollars, twenty dollars, thirty five dollars, uh, I've got a stack of them in there. Yeah. And uh, so, but uh, and then you got all your tax coalition yeah. group and this and that. Uh, but certain ones I donate to and the others I. Well, you know, we, we both lived through this period, and I'll make this statement because it was a, happens to be a colleague of mine one time at Ball State, and that is I think we've gone a long way in the wrong direction <laughs> in this area when you think that we were once represented by someone like Phil Sharp, and now we're represented by Mike Pence. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and if it's not him, I mean, uh, uh, Phil Sharp was, uh, was, yeah. was a great uh, yeah. uh, guy in Congress. Yeah. And he got things done yeah. uh, in his uh, uh, way. Uh, of course, uh, he's like you uh, yeah. in Ball State. Yeah. And, uh, uh, he knew what he was doing. Yeah. He was on the inside track, yeah. what I say, yeah. what I call the inside yeah. track. Yeah. And he did it gracefully. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and uh, I, I hated to see him uh, really uh, bow out. Oh, yeah, me too. You know, yeah. but uh, so many years, yeah. uh, you right. get burned out. That's right. That's uh, right. I mean, it's yeah. uh, not good for him himself. Yeah. And, uh, and like, uh, well, even the burst by, of course, yeah. 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 Uh, <clears throat> his wife. Of course, uh, you know, I yeah, right. and, But uh, Kevin, uh, I still think <laughs> uh, some of these days uh, that uh, he, he might uh, he'll run for president. Yeah, he might, yeah, he, I think yeah. you're probably right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I want to thank you so much for spending this time with me. It's been a really interesting uh, bit of, of good old Muncie as Middletown labor history, and so I'm really indebted to you for your kindness, and I want to thank you for that. Well, you're certainly welcome, and as I say, I talk more about the, uh, <laughs> politics and and, uh, and uh, well, the uh, law enforcement end of it, uh, more so than the dead labor unit, maybe. Well, but, it, but it's a fascinating story, and I wish you happy holidays uh, and Merry uh, Christmas. Uh, there was, uh, when I, uh, uh, before I went out as chief, oh, what was his name, uh, uh, Bill, he was a professor out of Ball State, uh, he's retired now, uh, uh, William, he wanted uh, that he, uh, my years, that uh, uh, it was troublesome years, that uh, we had the racial situation yeah, oh, yeah. to take care of, and you know, like Willard Hackley, you yeah, know, and, uh, right. and of course I got a big, biggest paddy wagon almost <laughs> yet, you know, and, and then, uh, uh, the, you know, they stopped there and they drag him out of the car and yeah. beat him up and rob him. And yeah. Uh, that uh, I had to, I had that to deal with, and uh, then of course the tongue in cheek that uh, uh, thing out the ball state. Uh, oh, the streaking stuff. Streaking, streaking. <laughs> that, that, that. I tell you. About, I was thinking about you because uh, I, I'll, I'll tell you uh, as say that that, uh, that well the first first day uh, uh, they had that you know yeah. which is about about three thousand some. Right. The next one is about two thousand some. Then the third day, I made up my mind, it's got to be put down. Yeah. That, that's uh, almost getting into anarchy. Yeah. And uh, and then I assembled the, 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 the guys, the helmets, the full right yeah, gear, tear that. gas, and the whole bit. <laughs> and as I say, before that, I, I was out there wa walking, and, and uh, <laughs> we were not be sure about it. But uh, uh, I, I was out in plain clothes, and, uh, and, and here uh, uh, there were one person there knew I was a policeman, and but anyway, there was a fight there, and uh, not no no racial nothing like that, yeah. and 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 one of the guys got a gun, and uh, and I said well, where where at where where was that you know and there's uh, yeah. I, yeah it was shoulder to shoulder, and and I and of course I just I had to, uh, I was armed heavily, and uh, even on plain clothes, and uh, I. Uh, uh, I, I went toward him, and he say he and I said, "Now you." Uh, they call him what's the name, and they start throwing rocks at, rocks at him, and, and I started running after him, and I and I pulled my gun out, and I thought, "I, I drop it right now, R drop it now, now," and he keep on running, and these guys in the back where he had to fight with, they were throwing rocks over my head, hit them, and every time he uh, hit him, he turned around, and he had a 357 Magnum, so did I. And uh, and uh, and uh, and I couldn't uh, do anything because it had hurt innocent people. You know, ran him all uh, all the way back up to the girls' dorm. Uh, I know, uh, yeah, the girls' dorm. Yeah. And they they locked that at ten o'clock or whatever it was, yeah. nine o'clock maybe. And he ran all the way there, uh, going up those steps. He thought he'd get a building and get in different rooms, I suppose. But uh, uh, he he was a well anyway. Uh, that when, when when he went there and I didn't know the door was locked either and I was running after him and uh, and so I, I was uh, uh, determined uh, that I was going to take him and uh, and the door was locked and I said you know, I used some choice word you drop it and yeah. and you're you're, you're going to be dead or a few other words and that's that and of course he dropped it he knew a minute and I I, I, I would have I mean I would have tried to lag I wouldn't try to kill him but. Yeah. Uh, 
but uh, that and then the boss said, please, uh, uh, I had a little differences with him. Yeah. We agreed that uh, that's Tom Audrey was chief, you know, and uh, they were, uh, I had all my people here and we swept the streets in a wedge position, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, what we call uh, sweeping the streets. <laughs> and uh, and the tear gas, you know, uh, we threw the tear gas and of course we got a lot of the guys cussing at us, you yeah. know, and call us names and everything else. But uh, we, we swept the streets, and they were running here and there, and, and then there was a, a, I don't know, a husband and, and wife, uh, they got involved and somehow with uh, the police, and, and they, they had to uh, arrest them, and, yeah. and I don't remember their names or nothing like that, yeah, but, but, uh, but the, the outsiders, there was outsiders coming in on that, you know, yeah. and it made it worse, yeah. you know, I'll you know, give you some coffee for today, and uh, so uh, that, uh, that uh, I had that to deal with too, right. and uh, and so uh, they didn't uh, really go to court. Uh, they they were arrested, and and uh, and so. Uh, but I, I talked to uh, the vice president. Uh, Which one, Burkhart? No, I'm uh, for him. Uh, let's see, Oliver Baum. And Oliver Baum. I, I talked to Oliver Baum, and, okay. and and when I got on the scene uh, as a third night. Uh, well, I was there a little bit the second night, and uh, and uh, get the band out and get them over there, and right. maybe you know uh, the, the crowd would go over and yeah. the band, yeah. and so they did. And there wasn't a half a dozen people <laughs> over there, yeah. and here people running all over, and then block the street, yeah. uh, uh, freedom of movement. Uh, you know that's yeah. you can't have that. But uh, anyway, make a long story short, that uh, uh, that happened, and and we put it down, and I got calls from the other other uh, state yeah. universities. Sure. Uh, that uh, that it started the West Coast, you know, yeah, and, and came yeah. uh, came yeah. this way as a fad, and, uh, and so that, that you know right after the hippies and the hippies yeah. and all this and and so uh, and I got told to them, well, you you put it down and we're glad to put it down because yeah. we won't have it now, yeah. you know the police will act, yeah. uh, and so that I was, I was pleased uh, about that, and uh, but. Uh, all in all, I had to say that uh, the, uh, yes, I can't think of the professor out there, the, he, a transition in law enforcement, that's why he wanted to get together and, and we'd write, uh, and we'd, which I never wrote a book before, you know, yeah. uh, and, and, and he wanted to get together and I, I, I sort of put him on and I said, yeah, yeah, we'll get together one of these days and we'll sit down and it just never happened. I mean, I. I had things to do, and sure he kept busy uh, out there. Yeah. Sutton, Bill Sutton, Bill Sutton, sure, English and, and, yeah. yeah, and he's the one, and uh, yeah. and of course he, he did, and uh, you know uh, when you do things, uh, when you get a little praise, I mean uh, you appreciate it yeah. uh, when uh, you went through it, and, yeah. and 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 so, and that's when the merit commission and uh, yeah. came, came on board, you know. And uh, transition and law enforcement. That's why he won the title. Well, and uh, but we just never got together and sat yeah. down. And and, uh, and and he would have. I'm sure would have know how to yeah. start uh, the books, uh, small books, some sort. Yeah. And uh, transition and law enforcement. Well, thank you very much for your interview. Uh, I appreciate uh, coming here and at least mention my name and down history hundred <laughs> years from now, maybe. Thank you. Yeah. Let me get you. Oh.